Hello, operators, whether you're tier one or tier none, you're welcome here. I was the white motorcycle policeman. This has not only helped one child, it is available online. You can get the hard copy. You can do something called streaming, something called downloading. This is not only helping his child and helping restore his family life and giving his son a good night's rest. It's helping hundreds, if not thousands of people. You get testimonials daily. Daily. Mm -hmm. Some of them are, are, are incredibly moving. So get a load of that, folks. If you get hurt, you get injured, you got to pick up a hobby. And you got to take that hobby, and you got to make a difference with that. Can you imagine, out of that adversity, this evil, this person who intended to do Brian harm, uh, shot Brian. I know people like to say critical incident. I like to say the facts. Brian was shot by mm -hmm. somebody who intended him to murder me. To murder him. Uh, out of that, instead of becoming an expert player of whatever that video game was, you did. MLB the show. See, we had we had Pong and Tech. No, we didn't have a <laughs> We had Pong, so I don't know what MLB. I think that's Major League Baseball. It's Major League Baseball. Yeah. So what did he do? And I'm bragging on him because he's a friend, and I think it's the greatest thing ever. Learned the guitar, reached out, got some science behind it, tested it on his own child, developed this. And you did all this on your own, right? Yes. You're the whole production company. Yeah. You're the whole social media program. The whole thing. The Facebook, the Instagram. All of it. All of it yourself. Yep. Amazing. Uh, how many people have we reached with this so far? So um, we just crossed a million streams. One million. Between Spotify and Apple Music. We've sold, I, I don't even know how many CDs now. Uh, it is, when it, a week after it was released, it became the number one new release in children's lullabies on Amazon.com for three months. Wow. Uh, it continues to trend in the top 10 children's lullabies on Amazon today. And starting about mid-July, it reached the Billboard charts in the New Age album category, where it's remained now for 15 weeks. That's going to be even higher by the time we hear. See, folks, when I say tens of dollars, stick with me. People associated with me, people are making t literally tens of dollars by doing the things they love. Yeah. Now, this is an entire album. This is how many songs? It's 15 songs. And they're all laid out in, ver in specific purpose. So the first couple songs are actually designed to stress your mind and overload it, with songs three and four being used to essentially reset and, and relax you and allow you to partake in the goodness that follows, if you will. And then the whole album is set uh, specifically to the average sleeping heart rate of kids between age uh, six and 13. So you, they play, they hear the whole thing every night. Yeah. So you, what I what I do, what I tell what people do to do, the best thing to do is to come along and play songs one through fifteen, right in order. Don't put this on shuffle; it won't work. You'll you'll actually screw up your brain waves. Um, I wish oh, that's probably what happened to me. But yeah, well, you know that was the '80s dance mix shuffle. No, wow. I'm sorry. So play songs uh, one through fifteen, and then once the album goes through one complete iteration then just put songs 10 through 15 on repeat all night and you can do all most people know how to do this from their device yeah so like if you have a spotify subscription if you just search adhd lullaby which is the name of the album and then official playlist i've already set that up for 10 hours of sustained sleep Outstanding. so it's got one through t one through 15 and then 10 through 15 on repeat and resoundingly what we're seeing is most kids now i, I recognize as much as i want this to be a magic drug for everybody it's not um, most kids with ADHD who are on stimulant medications are falling asleep in about 30 minutes. Outstanding. Versus two or three hours. And it's a massive improvement. Um, and then more importantly is they're staying asleep. And so we're, we're making sure that, or at least we're helping get them the rest they need. Will you be at any point in the future doing one for geriatrics? For people over a certain age, because I would love to sleep more than two hours. <laughs> Is there a tone that would tell my prostate and bladder to behave that might let me sleep for more than two hours? Have you, have you researched that? Would you uh, be willing to? Probably not. Uh, there, ironically enough, so one of the things I do have is I have a patent on the method used to record this, or I should say it's a patent pending on the method used to record this. And so... Uh, I know what that means because I watch Shark Tank. Yes. That's always ask, and I forgive me for not asking that sooner. Yes. Um... 
Uh, my plan here in December is I'm going to be releasing a 25-minute song. One song, 25 minutes long, specifically for adults for power naps. So taking that same technology that's, that works in oh, I'm listening. the ADHD lullaby, and that's going to be a 25-minute power nap song. So when you're in the middle of the day, you finish lunch, and you want to put your head down for 25 minutes and need to tune out the world, Bada bing, bada boom. Will it wake me up at the end of 25 minutes? No. Okay. But your boss will. Ah, uh, yes, that's true. Um, and then in 2020, my goal is to release an entire full-length album specifically for adults with ADHD who also have trouble sleeping. Wow. And we'll go from there. We might do one on study focus. We might, we can use the, we can use the technology and the recording method behind this album for a lot of different things. So like pre-game mental stimulation, uh, study focus, I'm trying to think what else are. Um, I could see that in the flotation tank, the flotation pod, the isolation stuff. Yep. That'd be great. Yeah. Love to sell. Yeah. Google, if you're listening, oh, I'd yeah. love to sell you this and, you know, have you put this in your, um, your little, you know, power nap. Yes. Bubbles Google, at, please. At, at Google. That would be awesome. It would be. Think of the tens of dollars, folks, that could come in. May, well, maybe 11. Okay, well, yes. But I like the under promise and the way people are overwhelmed when they see that it's more than 10. Yeah. So we're... You've got it all planned out. You've got it all figured out. I wish I did. At some point, is this going to get top heavy and become full time for you? No, I won't leave the sheriff's office. Uh, that, I knew that would. <laughs> that was, let's let's get back to that speaking of the sheriff's office and that critical incident. Uh, when things happen, bad things happen to police here in Arizona, and I'm sure it's the same in most parts of the country. I get upset when we have to do things like car washes to meet their needs, or to have barbecues and things like that. Uh, and you never know what to say. You and I had some history, so we... I'm, I'm going to opine on that a second. Okay, because I we I need to know, because you never know what to say. Hey, uh, you know, like this last Tempe shooting, she, uh, she, I've known her longer than I've known you, that officer. And the only thing I could think to say was, didn't wasn't I voted more likely, most likely to get shot before you were? And, and I really didn't know what to say, because you don't know what to say. All that emotion comes up, because you see that they're going to be okay. But people don't get, they see, they hear... Uh, non-life threatening, and they don't get that it can be career threatening. Mm -hmm. It can be career ending because where do we get shot? We get shot in the limbs oftentimes. Mm -hmm. Bad guys, for some reason, do not practice the way we do. They don't dry fire. They don't, but they get some hellacious shots off on the run, on moving while impaired. So as a community, did we do right by you, and what could we do better? So let's go back to the car washes for a second. And the other, we'll call it fundraisers and barbecues and things like that. Uh, a very close friend of mine, and actually a, a friend of yours, you, you know her, um, said something to my wife that I've never forgotten. And the it, it got a little overwhelming in the sense that there was like a, a, a train of w police wives that were bringing dinner to the house every single night for two months. And it, it got a little old, but what she said to us was, you have to understand that when one of us gets hurt, we all get hurt. And so we're all going through this grieving process and we don't know what to say. We don't know what to do. We don't have the right words. And so doing the things like putting on a car wash or putting on a barbecue or bringing dinner to the families or whatever it is, it's kind of like our community's way of saying, not only are we here for you, we're sorry this happened to you, and we're going to make sure you're taken care of. And so on, on some level from an outsider looking in, it's like, oh, you're having a car wash? I mean, like how much money could you really raise with a car wash? And, you know, you might raise 20, 30 grand in a car wash. And, you know, for the family of a deceased officer or deputy, that's, that's nothing. 20 grand, you know. See, and I, I think I wish the state would step up. I wish that we had things in place so that we, these did, I understand, and I do like that explanation. Thank you for sharing it with me. But I would love somehow for the system to be set up so that if, God forbid, that should happen, that you just know that you're taken care of by the agency, the state, and the community. Oh, uh, there's there's some things in place. I, and my understanding is the state, if you if you have a an officer or deputy killed in line of duty or a trooper, I should say, too, um, the state 
not only I, th- I believe picks up health insurance for okay, the family. Good. Um, the children of that officer, trooper, or deputy uh, have free tuition at any of the state uh, universities, so NAU, ASU, University of Arizona. Uh, there's a, there's some other benefits in there too for the families that the state provides. There's federal benefits. Uh, there's federal grants, and there's all there there's there's a lot of stuff there. Um, you know, from me, from a financial standpoint, the, the things that I see that what officers, deputies, troopers don't really get taught in the academy is how to set up yourself in the event of a critical incident. Maybe it's a disability, right? There's so many officers, troopers, and deputies out there that are working off-duty jobs, security, road construction, and they're really using that money to supplement their family. Exactly. They get hurt, that goes away. Mm. And the disability insurance they have through work covers their salary, not the other two thirds of their income, which is coming from these various off-duty jobs or outside gigs that they have. And it's, to me, that's the bigger threat. And there really isn't anything in place that will help these these officers and deputies and troopers in the event that that occurs. Uh, the other thing that, that so I, what is there something that they should be doing? From- well, I, I think they should, you know, total up their, their income in a, in a given year and figure out how much disability insurance they have and then go buy a disability insurance policy privately and not through work. Excellent idea. Uh, and then the other thing is go buy life insurance, right? You come out of the academy, you're in the best shape of your life. Most of them are extremely young. Um, what's the average age of academy graduation? Under 30? You can buy a couple million dollars in life insurance for 40 bucks at that age, a month. Why wouldn't you do that? For, cover you for your entire career. Something bad happens to you right now. I know that if I get killed in the line of duty, my family gets six million bucks. They're fine. To heck with whatever the state and the feds provide. Right, right. My family's going to be just fine. And, and I bought that when I was young and healthy, and it doesn't cost me that much money to do that. So they should be teaching that in the academy. They should have a whole personal finance section. And they don't. That's a really good point. They don't. It's, it's no that different. makes a lot of sense. It is no different than the question I ask is, why do we need to know the Pythagorean theorem to graduate high school and not how to balance a checkbook? Exactly. It's no different. And cursive now. You don't have to write. Kids don't even learn how to write cursive oh, anymore. Don't get me started. <laughs> what do they put on citations now when you give, you do give people tickets, don't you? Oh, oh yes. Does this make their mark? I hope you, you could, for those of you just listening, you did not get to see that smile, but for those of you who are listening and watching, that grin says it all. Look at those dimples. Oh, yes, he gives oh, citations. Yes. Do they, what, are, what are young people putting on there now, an X? No, millennials just write their name in like block lettering. Wow. It's, you really see that? Oh, it's it's incredible. Really? At Christmas time, visiting a family, the young lady's passing out the gifts. Her grandmother writes her, their names out. She did not could not even read her own name in cursive. She had to say, Grandma, who's this for? And she goes, well, that's your name in cursive. They don't teach it in school. They don't teach uh-huh. it. A lot of schools don't teach it. Some some schools do. You know, I've heard it back and forth and all that stuff, but I guess I just didn't think about real day-to-day, you know, and let's wow. let the conspiracy theorist in me come out and say. I, I know a person whose daughter is in high school that attends uh, their PE class online, and I that <laughs> that would be me. I'd say <laughs> that blew my mind. I'm all for that. I was like, but how I, does that I also work? Under, I also understand why they don't teach cursive anymore, right? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I get that type, side of it. I can type 80 words a minute sure. faster than I can write cursive. Sure. As a kid in high school and college, I didn't have a computer sitting in front of me right. to take notes with. I had to scratch out notes as fast as humanly possible <laughs> to keep up with the professor or the teacher. Nowadays, what these kids do is they sit there and they put their iPad on their desk. They might have a little you know, keyboard to write notes in. They hit record inside of Evernote, and they've got the entire class in recording. And if for 20 bucks a month, they can take that recording, send it to some phone app that will transcribe <laughs> the entire thing. Now, do you realize how easy it is to be a student today? I'm going back to school for that and many other reasons. I would have been like an A student with the way you just laid it out. <laughs> it's, I mean, it's incredible. There's actually no reason to be failing with the way you just laid it out. So, None. 
I agree with all that. But in one of my AOL chat rooms that I maintain, of the seven that I still maintain, you, the wait, one... Wait, wait. Did you just say you hang on to AOL? Oh, AOL chat rooms. I have one on... Saving a, you still have discs. a Hotmail account, too, Absolutely. Don't you? And, and one of them is a... Cons- we're talking AOL about... Cons- about conspiracy theories. See, you guys are paid by the government to try to silence me. The reason they did away with cursive <laughs> is so that no one can read the Constitution or the Bill of Rights for themselves. That's what I garnered. Maybe gar- onto something. No, I garnered that from my OL chat room. <laughs> Seven visitors in the last 15 years. Six of them were me. I'm going to respectfully disagree. That's a lot of coast to coast listening. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, I don't want those people after me. That's Have a, you seen what they can do? That's a little obtuse. If, if you, you me. mention the coast to coast people and they get mad at us, you don't know the. That's okay. We'll edit that part out. That's fine. <laughs> they probably have a listening device in here, given what they've done. Your next project, because you've got plenty of room on your counter, is to draft the proposed basic finance class for deputies, officers, troopers. So do you need a whole day or a half day to teach that class? You need about four hours. Right. I'd come to that if you had some yeah. stats. Well, <laughs> and it, you know, I call it the GoFundMe revolution. Everybody everybody today seems to finance the uh, oh crap moments with GoFundMe. And that's, and, and on one level I get it, but on another level it's, it's basically said to an entire generation, you don't have to have personal responsibility because if anything bad happens to you, there's always GoFundMe. <laughs> 